Hello, middle school math teacher. If you have been wondering how you can run small group or stations in your middle school math class so that you can work with a small group of students, but are struggling with how in the world do you work with the rest of your class at the same time, this is the video for you. If we don't already know each other, my name is Kathy Martin and I'm the creator of the Pre-Algebra Teachers Middle School Math Membership, your one-stop shop for everything you need to teach 6th, 7th, 8th grade and Algebra 1 math. I love running stations and I understand that in theory it might be really hard to envision how do you work in small groups while reaching all of your students. And I'm here to tell you it's totally possible, it's totally doable, and it's effective. So first off, number one, what you wanna do when you decide that you wanna start implementing the math stations, math workshop, the small group model in your class, you really have to set the expectation for your students. Just like you would on the first, you know, those first few days of school where you are setting the expectations in your class with all the rules and, you know, here is, here's what you do if you need this, here's where you go if you need these, this. Same with working and using stations in the classroom. You have to set the expectation of, you know, are students able to interrupt you while you are working with a group of students? What are they supposed to do while they're in the station? You know, what are they supposed to do when they're done with their assignment? These are all things that need to be practiced before you as a teacher even begin working with students, okay? Number two, when you decide that you want to implement stations, in theory, well, not in theory, but in reality, students are going to be working in individual small groups on an assignment right and ideally you want that you want there to be multiple assignments that students are working on however you can't just throw like here's i'm going to put my group or i'm going to split my class up into six groups and i'm going to have six activities going at the same time like no no no, no. don't do that okay what you want to do is you want to group your kids say let's just take six groups just because that's what i said break your kids up into their individual groups so that they can see, okay, this is what it, they can see and feel what it's like to be in a small group, see and feel what it's like to sit in this part of the room. But when you first start, everybody is going to be doing the same thing. They're going to be doing the one assignment. Okay. No matter where they're sitting in the class, no matter what group they're in, everyone is doing the same assignment because you want them to practice how to complete that assignment. So for example, I love to use my example of task cards. Oftentimes before students arrived in my class, they may have never used task cards before. So they're not gonna know what to do with these little cards. They're not gonna know what to do like with the sheet of like where they show their work, right? So I am setting up the expectation one of this is how we behave and this is how this is what we do during stations time and then two we are practicing this the task card activity this gives me the opportunity to address to the whole class how i want you to complete the assignment what you're supposed to do with the task cards when you're done and the answer is put them back in numerical order and put the paper clip back on it so it's nice and neat for the next group you know, you're, and I'm explaining to my students, you're going to show me your work on this sheet of paper. This is where all your work goes, or, you know, you're going to write your name here. And when you're done, this is what you do next, right? I am training my students. I'm training the whole class. So there's no questions. And we are focused on one activity at a time. And then maybe in a few days, or the next time I run stations, we're going to do the same thing, but with a different activity, right? So that when I'm fully running my stations, then, and I have multiple activities going, they've already seen the activity and they already know what to do. And number three, having engaging activities is really, really important. So I like to incorporate task cards general, almost always as one of my stations because it's tactile. It is really um, for students who get overwhelmed, it's the perfect activity because you're only working on one problem at a time. Um, I love to incorporate, um, you know, maybe a coloring page. So you have, you're really 
speaking to those students who prefer a little bit more artistic, you know, having an artistic outlet, having a technology piece is really important, running your teacher table so you have that touch base point. Those are just some ideas, but having whatever your students like in terms of the types of assignments that they like, that is a type of activity that I would love to encourage you to use because if your students aren't engaged, that's when the behavior issues happen on top of needing to set those expectations and practicing the activities. So that is how you are able to work with a small group at the same time and still reach all of your students because you're rotating your students through to your teacher table so you are able to touch base with every single one of your students while the rest of your class is still mathing and still practicing the skills that they need to practice. So let me know in the comments what you think, which of these which of these ideas are you needing to implement in your classroom to make this happen? Until next time, bye for now.